Thank you for coming to our innovation presentation this afternoon. I'm Michelle Tan, and I am part of Evolve by Nature. And who is Evolve by Nature? Well, we're a new type of biotechnology company. And what we're here to do today is to talk to you about biotechnology and the role that it can play in the leather industry. So the question is, how does biotechnology work and how can it really help us in leather? Well, it comes back down to circular economies are important and therefore we need sustainable ingredients used in our leather processing to help us develop leathers that are biodegradable and compostable. And we're doing this because we know the brands as well as the consumers are asking for more sustainable options. So many of the brands, as we know, now have their sustainability goals, which are published. And then many of the governments are also pushing down these regulations. At the same time, we have consumers, especially the younger generation, asking for more sustainable products. But to us, sustainable just doesn't mean no leather. Sustainable to us is how do we make leather more sustainable? So that's where biotechnology comes into play. Biotechnology is using natural processes to create new products. And so what does that mean? Well, most people think of genetic engineering when they think of biotechnology. So like the Jurassic Park movie, where they're using DNA to create dinosaurs. But that's really not the crux of biotechnology. It's actually more common products that are formed. So first, on the right-hand side, you see oranges. Oranges are the source of vitamin C. And there needed to be a natural process available to extract vitamin C and use it in ingredients such as other liquids that we drink, as well as in skincare products. Then there's also wine. That's another product that's formed through biotechnology. In that case, with wine, you have the grapes, and they're being fermented, and then you get the wine out of that. So again, you're starting with something natural, and you're making a change to it using something that happens naturally in nature to make it into another format. Oops. Sorry. It's not. Sorry about that. So, in terms of sustainable biotechnology, it means we're not only improving our processes and manufacturing, which we've been working on today, working on waste reduction in the tannery environments, working on better water cleansing processes. And obviously, we've been introducing products throughout time in the tanning process, which are more biodegradable in the future. And what that will mean is not only will tanneries be achieving better life cycle analysis, which is reducing their carbon emissions, but there'll be other benefits as well. And like we've said, biocompostability is very big coming up. So that is one of the benefits. There's also improvements in the climate as well. Many of the biotechnology products actually emit less carbon than other petrochemical products out there. So if you compare something like a polyurethane with some of the natural chemicals that can be derived, you're reducing the carbon footprint. And then also many of these, these products are natural, so that means they can actually go down the drain. Now I know we would not want to do that with our water treatment processing, but it does give us the confidence that we have something that's non-toxic that's going into our environment when it does biodegrade. And then lastly, we all know we want safer, better chemicals in our tanneries, and more biotechnology-based products will allow us to get there. So our company 
evolved by nature, is focused on silk. And silk occurs naturally in nature, as we all know. It's in the cocoon form. And what we're doing is we're extracting the silk protein, much like vitamin C gets extracted from orange juice. So we take the, the silk protein, we put it in water, and then it can become a finishing agent in the tanning industry. And there's other parts of the silk process which really fall into some of the other areas that we're looking at today. So for example, bio-based is very important. Well, the root of silk is actually a mulberry leaf. And the silkworm eats a mulberry leaf, they spin their cocoon, and then the cocoons are bio waste products in our instance because these are cocoon these are silkworms that are being raised for protein sources for fish and other animals. And so by taking silk, we have a, a process just with water and salt, and we can do, we can extract the protein and dissolve it in water. So again, very simple process. This is this is what happens in nature all the time. So what we're using the silk molecule to do is replace polyurethane ultimately. Uh, silk, as you know, has features where it's very, very, has a very protective coat. It's very durable. And so silk can be used to do things like improve color fastness to rubbing, as well as improving color fastness to PVC migration. So hoping both with the bleeding and the rubbing. So what we found at this stage is that up to 100% of polyurethane can be replaced. And this is in instances like with aniline leathers where you're using a little bit of polyurethane to begin with. And then when you move into a fully pigmented finish, you're able to reduce by combining with some polyurethane. And that's much like some of the other presentations that you've heard of over the past days is that Everything takes some time when you're working with natural ingredients. And it's overnight, you can't replace everything, but you want to take the baby steps to get there. So in our case, that's what we're doing. We're taking the molecules, and we're improving them over time so that we can get up to 100% polyurethane replacement in all cases. And like I mentioned, we're able to replace the polyurethane because silk provides a protective layer that can improve color fastness to rubbing, so your clients don't have the dyes rubbing off on their clothing, as well as color fastness to be PVC migration. So one of our clients was having a big issue with bleeding of their black and red colors into the soles of their athletic footwear, as well as the tongue. And so we first were able to demonstrate through internal testing in their labs and using the standard ISO test that we're able to reduce the amount of bleeding that would occur. And then when the client then went and made some shoes out of the, the product and did some wear testing, we could then visually see the difference when there was silk and when there wasn't, so a real life application. And that's part of what we're really focused on right now are those applications where you can see a difference, where you get improved performance, but then you're getting the other um, things that you would get from polyurethane. So for example, we know we need to be able to modulate the gloss level, we need to be able to modulate, is it going to be a hard top coat or a more flexible base coat? And by playing with silk molecules, you're able to do this. The future isn't just about silk molecules, obviously. It's about how can we look for other things in nature that can be used to replace some of the toxic chemicals that are used today so that ultimately we can create leather that is sustainable, that really is biodegradable, and can compete with other alternative market products that are on the market today and has a really, really great story about being biodegradable. And so our hope is uh, other folks like you and other folks are going to be either adopting or helping to create more chemistries like this in the future. So any questions about biotechnology in general or activated silk? Okay. Well,
Well, great. Well, thank you very much for your time. Mm-hmm.